What's up, homie? It's your boy Santi, and I'm trying to teach you how to digitize. I'm going to be using Hatch 3 to teach you how to digitize. If you don't have Hatch 3, damn. Homie, that sucks. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm going to leave a link down below where you can download, install a 30-day free trial of Hatch 3 so you can follow along. Let's go, bro. I got you, homie. I'm going to start off with the basics. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the running stitch. When using the running stitch, you got to remember that the left click is to make straight points and the right click is to make curved points. For example, right here we have a circle and right here we have a square. We have two options. You could use digitized open shape and digitized closed shape. Digitized open shape basically means that the shape is going to be that it's not going to automatically close. So let's say if I stop right here and I press enter, that's exactly where it's going to stop. But in case I use digitized close shape, if I were to start right here and stop right here, it's going to automatically close it for me. So when I press enter, it's going to close the whole object. Okay, for this square, I'm going to introduce you guys to using critical which it helps you make straight lines. So we could do digitized close shape. And if we hold critical, when we're making our points, it's going to help you make a perfect straight line. So let's go right here. Left click. Left click. Left click. And right here, you can actually just press enter. It'll automatically close it for you. So now we have a square. Okay, so now we're going to do this leaf. Um, since it has many points that are not going to be closed, we're going to just use digitized open shape. Because if we try to use digitized closed shape and we were doing the lines, if I were to stop right here and I would have pressed enter, it would have gone back to where we started. So that would be the incorrect tool to use. So we're going to use digitized open shape. And we're going to remember left click is to make straight points. Right click is to make curve points. I'm just going to left click it. And then when it starts like making curves, I'm just going to right click it. And I'm actually going to stop right here. I'm going to tell you guys why. Right here we stop because there is an object going to the left and object going to the right. Right now I'm going to introduce you guys to using the back stitch which is you have to press control B. Okay, so we're going to go from the point where it ended and we're going to go to the next object. So I'm going to automatically start making this line. If you guys mess up, if you press backspace, you could go back a nod. So if I were to go delete, delete, it'll just delete the nods and you can just keep going in case you ever mess up. Okay, so if we stopped right here, how are we going to get back to over here? The trick is to press, is to click the object that we just made and press control B and it will take us back to where we were. And now I would just go back and make the next object and just proceed. So I'll just click it, control B, we're back over here, and then we just continue. This is something you guys are going to have to keep practicing and practicing, but eventually you guys are going to become professionals at this and if you guys have any questions just write it as a comment and I'll answer it when I have time so critical B
the next video that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teach you guys how to use a fill stitch. I'm gonna try to upload like three times a week. Okay, so we got that part done, but what I usually like to do is go back to um, the bottom since everything else is double. I'm going to click the last part that we just did, critical B, and I'm going to click the, the other line that was below it. And I'm also going to press critical B, but it actually makes it right after the object. So if I were to do that, it wouldn't have been made properly. So the sequencing is we're going to have to move it to the end. And then after that, the same thing for the other line. Move it to the end. And then we're right here. Critical B. Drag it all the way to the bottom. So now we're right here. And then now we just got to finish it by closing it. So right here, I could actually use digitize close shape because this shape is going to be closed. And when you're making it, um, just check if it's if it's like aligned to the outline of the object that you're making. And if it's not, like if you jump too much and the next one doesn't align it, you just press delete and remake it. And right now I can just click enter and it'll automatically close it for me. And for that one as well, I'm just going to click it and I'm going to click critical B. And we're done with this one. Now we're going to make the ball. All right, now I'm going to start making this ball. I'm actually going to start for the ball. I'm going to start from the, from this part right here. I'm going to start from this part right here because I'm going to have to have an exit once I make the all the rest of the lines. And I'm going to have to come back to the outside to do the rest of the shape. So now that we're here, I'm just going to continue. I'm going to click that, critical B, and I'm just going to continue. I don't like the way that one came out, so I'm just going to... Click it, control B to go back and just keep going. Click 
click it control V let's continue Click it, control B. Almost done with this part. Okay, so now I'm gonna go since everything is like double, I'm gonna click it and I'm actually gonna press control B right here. So now we're gonna go back to, to this part, control B, but remember we have to move it to the end sequence. Click it, control B, move it to the end. Next part. Control B, move it to the end. Click it to the end. To the end. And then the part that we started at, that helps us so much because that's our way out to finish the design. So critical B, move it to the end. And now we just finished the, the last part of the circle. Just that is close shape. I'm gonna click where we exited it. Right click. Right click. Right click. I always try to touch the, the last tips of where we exited. That way everything is connected when you embroider it. And then right here you can actually just press enter. And then after that we just click it again. Critical B. Now we're done. If you guys have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section. And we could actually hit shift R. And we could, sh we could see everything that we just made um, stitch out. I think it started right there. I'm gonna up the speed a little bit. I always run the player to see the way it's gonna stitch out. Because the way you see it right here, stitch out is the way the, your embodied machine is gonna stitch it out. Let me see, I'm gonna show you guys this again, but like in slower speed. Probably 600. That's why it's important to learn how to use the running stitch because you have to also learn how to integrate the back stitch so your embroidery comes out cleaner and better. And instead of doing a line, cutting it, um, your machine is gonna trim the lines when it finishes and to go back to a place that you shouldn't have um, had to trim, it's just gonna be a waste of time for your machine and it's gonna make your and body process take longer. All right, so this concludes this part of the video for the running stitch. My next video is gonna be how to use um, the tatami stitch. Wow, um, <laughs> I was actually nervous filming this video because I haven't filmed in a long time, but I wanted to start making videos to teach you guys how to digitize. So if you guys have any questions, 
Don't forget that you guys can always comment. I'll try my best to answer them. And don't forget to like the video. Subscribe if you want to get future updates of when I post a new video. Thank you guys. Bye.